Hello again and welcome to Asai Rasai. I'm making fish emboltial today. That's a Sri Lankan sour fish curry. I'm going to show you the most basic and easy way to make it. So stay with me. The best fish for this recipe is tuna. So you can use ahi tuna, yellow fin or skipjack. And this is some frozen tuna. I need to defrost it in cold water. And once it's thawed, I'll apply a little bit of lime juice, which is optional, and then rinse it out again. And this is the star of this dish, it's Goraka. In the Indian grocery store, you'll find it as Malabar Tamarind, Puli or Kudam Puli. This is a pack that I just got, so I have not really made anything else with it. If the quality is really good, the Goraka is not so hard like this and not so dried out. But sometimes this is as good as it gets, so we gotta work with what we have. Now to soften it for Embothial, you can either soak it in boiling water, you could microwave it, you could pound it, you could grind it, try to do whatever you can to get it into a paste. The easiest way to soften this is to stick it in the microwave with a little water. So that's what I'm doing now. I have put a little boiling water in this and when you microwave for about a minute, you'll notice that the goraka has absorbed all the water. So you might need to top it up again with a little more water and run it for about 30 seconds to one minute, depending on uh, your microwave, of course, on high power and it should be ready. And while that's happening, let's talk about the pot. I'm using this clay pot, which is a traditional one we use to make embolthial in. But if you don't have a clay pot, you can use stainless steel. But you have to use a non-reactive metal pan. If you use a reactive metal pan, it could interact with the acid from the goraka and cause your embolthial to taste metallic. It could also discolor the food. It could also become toxic, worst case scenario. So always be mindful of that when you're cooking acidic food. And finally, after about 90 seconds on high power, you can see the goraka is soft like a paste. Now it's ready to use. Use less of this paste if you want a mildly sour embolthial and you could use all of it if you want a moderately sour embolthial. Um, if you want to increase the quantity of fish but keep the same amount of paste, that can be done too. Gently apply the goraka paste on each piece of fish and do the best you can. If you want, you could do this with your fingers too, but I like using the back of the spoon for this. The fish needs to be spaced out, so when you're choosing a pan, just make sure that it's got enough space to spread out the pieces of fish. Before you place the fish in the pot, you could also line the pot with a banana leaf or apply a thin layer of oil and that will prevent the fish from burning or sticking to the pot. And here's the salt and some dry chili flakes, which is optional. And of course, salt is always to your liking. And we can combine all the other ingredients with the fish now. You can see how basic they are, the curry leaves. Of course, sometimes we don't have curry leaves. You can skip it if you don't have it. Uh, ginger, garlic, onions and green chilies. And I like to push all these fresh ingredients all the way under the fish and around the fish so that the flavors really infuse. Traditionally, this is a curry that was preserved for about a week in humid tropical weather long before refrigeration. So it was simmered very gently and for a long time until the fish was dry. And when I say dry, it was really dry. And since it was made in an open heart, the fish had a smoky flavor, which was really fantastic. I almost forgot the black pepper, so here it is. And once you have added everything, just uh, space out the fish again and make sure they're in an even layer, nicely spaced out. And then we add water, and this is just regular cold tap water, and it should come about halfway up the layer of fish. Since I'm not making this to preserve it, I'm not really big on following all the traditions of making embolthial. I just need embolthial for two meals. So I'm going to cook this on medium high heat and the water just needs to simmer until there's some wetness remaining, but there's no runny water or gravy. This is 15 minutes later. You can see it's coming to a rolling boil. So turn each piece over, reduce the heat to medium low and continue to cook it covered until all the water has simmered. But keep checking, you don't want the fish to burn. Now this embolthial is ready, but you can see there's some more moisture, but that will dry out further as the um, embolthial cools in this pot and on the hot stove. I've turned off the heat. So traditionally and for preserving, it should be left to dry out completely before you turn off the heat. But this is how I like it, so I'm just going to stick with this. Embolthial is a very southern dish from the coastal regions of Sri Lanka and there are many variations to it. So I found six different recipes in my books, but it all comes down to these simple ingredients that I've shown you. 
and the other recipes are also nice they have a lot going on with them with more spices and methods of making so sometime in the future i'll try out some of those as well i think the best way to enjoy this is rural southern style which is freshly cooked rice uh, while it's still hot and a side of fresh grated coconut and if you dare a fresh green chili and a few pearl onions for heat and crunch even otherwise ambotial goes with pretty much any sri lankan meal even with hiriba hoppers string hoppers anything and if you haven't subscribed already to my channel do so so that you get alerts whenever i upload a new video thanks for watching